I'd like to hand over now to uh, Andrew Dumm to introduce Andrew to you. As he comes over and I mic him up, just want to say a big thank you to Jerry Marshall publicly. Um, Jerry has been a, a stalwart and uh, fantastic steward at TBN over the years. Um, he's moving on, as you'll hear later, to other exciting projects. He's passed the baton on to Andrew Drummond, um, who will be uh, also helping us uh, drive the expansion of the network overseas. But um, we're delighted to have you on board. And uh, Andrew, over to you. Okay. Right. I would like to um, give you what I would see as the International Network Coordinator's view. That is my title, uh, International Network Coordinator, and what that reflects is the upscaling of the agenda and the initiatives that uh, TBN is going with. Um, and what I want to do is I want to look at that through the lens or the metaphor of the social enterprise or investment ecosystem. Stuart has talked about the first 10 years of TBN. Uh, and TBN fundamentally is founded on the conviction that business is the engine that drives opportunity and in turn drives development. And as we've, you've heard from the speakers, from uh, Steve, from Vivina, from Stuart, that is something that is no longer a subject for debate, really. We've moved on, and it's how we move forward with that. Um, TBN were pioneers and early adopters of that philosophy, our philosophy over the last 10 years could be summed up in the three E's, engagement, evaluation, and evolution, for a constantly refining process to be more effective, to be more impacting. And Steve talked about uncoordinated innovation, and it would be fair to say, and Stuart would admit, the early days were uncoordinated innovation. We have moved on to coordinated innovation. But there is nothing to be ashamed of uncoordinated innovation. I heard somebody say there is nothing quite so easy to control as a corpse. So, you know, if you're working in these kind of contexts, these kind of situations, it's messy. It demands innovation. Innovation, by its very nature, means frustration. It means disappointment. The definition of success is falling down nine times and getting up ten times. Social, so I want to talk about the social enterprise and investment ecosystem. I'm looking at a biological definition for an ecosystem. Um, take, going back to my A-level biology days, those of you who are more qualified in that than, than A-level, forgive me if I'm speaking down to you. I know, for example, I have a colleague uh, and a good friend who happened to be a... Um, He's a consultant doctor in the A&E department, and he knows Kim Tan. I was, talking with Kim, I was talking to him a couple of weeks ago, and he said, oh, yes, yes, I know Kim. I remember he did a doctoral thesis in uh, antigen transfer across the placenta. So forgive me when I'm coming at you with A-level biology, and you have a PhD in antigen transfer across the placenta. Um, but a definition, a working definition for an ecosystem is a group of diverse organisms and natural elements that are bound to a common environment existing in a, dynam a balanced and dynamic interaction to sustain life. A very simple uh, diagram of uh, an ecosystem consists of those parts. And what is important is the word system. It is a contained unit where the flow of energy between the parts keeps going and keeps sustaining life. And what we're looking at, what, the reason the metaphor of ecosystem is so effective, it brings in all partners all players into a framework. And in this room, I believe we have ecosystems that potentially, I want to explore that. Now, that's a generic ecosystem. And one of the things that defines an ecosystem and makes an ecosystem distinct is where it is. What are the natural resources? What are the, uh, are the, the, the building blocks upon which the wider ecosystem develops? Here, just a quick slide. This is a specific ecosystem. It happens to be the deciduous woodlands of North America. And so the type of animals you have is different from what you would have if you had a sub uh, uh, a, an ecosystem of the Serengeti because it's preconditioned by what is there. And we need to be responsive to the circumstances, to the opportunities that are there, the kind of things that um, Vivina has talked about that uh, Steve has talked about, to construct those ecosystems that are responsive to the opportunities to create and sustain life and prosperity and growth. Now, here's an example on the uh, 
left-hand side, some of, the ta- some of the titles, some of the roles, some of the careers that may be represented in this room. Um, and where do these, these fit in an ecosystem? Where do they fit? And on conversely, on this side, perhaps we have some of, the, uh, some of the roles, some of the careers, some of the opportunities that people in the global south, in the emerging economies, are engaged in. Uh, and I just want to put a, a comment in here. It is with great regret, some of you may have seen on the program, we did have um, uh, Lavu Rani from South Africa due to speak. He had difficulties with his visa, and that means he's not here. But I want to say it's with great regret that we do not have an authentic voice from the global south who is a tried and, tr- and, and proven entrepreneur who has demonstrated resilience and passion and is standing here as that voice. And I apologise for those of you who are looking forward to that and that he's not here. It is not an oversight on our part to, to, to not have that. And hopefully in another year he will be with us. But what we've got there, so you've got these two separate ecosystems, or these two separate habitats, these two separate uh, groups of people. Now, because of, as Stuart said, Skype, the internet, the connectivity we now join, it's these, these, inter- these are virtual ecosystems. They're not the ecosystem that is over there and the ecosystem that's here. These two, inter- these two ecosystems effectively interconnect through the technology and through the opportunities we have. And I don't know if you look down that list and if you are there, and if you're not, there's no reason why you... It's just, it's just I happen to select some and type these up. But I, I've, as Stuart said, there's no reason why you cannot be there. So here we have that ecosystem, all those creatures interconnected in that environment. Looking at TBN, extending the analogy from ecosystem to TBN, TBN is a network as innovative and as resilient and as effective as its member base. That is, those people that are engaged, those people that have signed up, those people have crossed the line to participate, as Stuart has unctioned you to do. And it's as strong and resilient and as effective as the synaptic connections that transmit that spark of enterprise into low-income economies and poverty grip communities. Now, I want to give you some real concrete, tangible steps that you could take today in terms of connecting with the ecosystem. But before I do, I want to talk about the value that you could gain from an ecosystem. And I'm just going to do that by bringing it close to home and talking about an example. I have a newfound, and I will say a newfound friend, because we spent two hours after a business meeting just chewing the fat and chatting away in a pub over a pint of bitter um, and it's, it's uh, Billy Hyatt, who's here from Tennessee, representing um, Boabab Foundation with two of his colleagues from Boston. Now, the reason that I connected up with Billy is he was here at this conference two years ago. As a result of that conference two years ago, he engaged with Tough Stuff, which Stuart talked of earlier. He set up um, the exclusive distribution rights into Malawi, secured through the, through the investment um, fund he's overseeing, $150,000 of investment to make that happen in Malawi. And his point of getting in touch, he got in touch with me three weeks ago and he said, look, I'm coming back to the conference, but I want to make sure that my 36 hours in the UK counts. What can you do? So I worked on hard and we did, I did some networking. I connected him up with um, Andrew Richardson, who you will hear later on from Metal Rack Stoves, who is not a, uh, a, 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 a stove developer, not an in- inventor for the poor. He happens to run a steel fabrication business in this country, but has recognised the obligation and, his, and, and his, what is his call on this watch to make an impact and has developed a product to do that. And I connected these two up. I connected up Billy and I connected up Andrew. They met last night for dinner. I don't know the outcome of that. Maybe it'll feature in the talk later. I also connected him up with uh, Billy Hyatt, who is here from the States, developing what is fast coming together as the US TBN, the US TBN network, because we've got a critical mass there, which means it's no longer worth them coming across here. It's worth us transferring that structure and that model to make it happen there. And I just quote these as examples of what happens because Billy Hyatt, a partner, got in touch and said, I want value for my money. I want an outcome to my time. What can you do? And that is my role as the International Network Coordinator, to deliver value on those terms. And I want to talk about how you can engage. In your pack, there are two sheets. There is 
a sheet which describes the uh, Transformational Business Network partnerships. It describes the partnerships, corporate partnership, and there is a list there of terms of engagement that we will bring to you if you join with us in this. I won't go through them all. There's some samples of them. There is individual partner engagement. Here is the terms that we will bring, the contractual obligations we want to, we want to bring to bear to bring maximised outcomes from your involvement. There is expo trips, an additional sheet in there. Here we've got about six trips listed that are happening this year and spring of 2013, where the trustees of TBN are going to uh, key locations, strategic locations, to explore the business opportunities, either new startups or growing businesses, to identify how they can maximise the transformational impact. And there are skills required. There are opportunities there to actually plug in to engage. And so that's an opportunity to cross the line and become a participant, to become an active partner with us. So as I say, TBN, a network as innovative, resilient, and effective as its member base, and the synaptic connections that transmit the spark of enterprise into the low-income economies and poverty grip communities. Over there, by that banner, there is a desk, a sign-up desk, where you can sign up, join as a partner, benefit from all the resources that we can bring to bear. And what I want to do is, I want to find my, in, my inbox, my message system on my phone, with some of the names and numbers that are on that delegate list, because you've crossed that line, because you've made that point, and you're hassling me to say, I'm an architect and I want to know what I do. I was moved by what uh, Vivina said about the slums. What can I do? There's a project in Mumbai where the, uh, the University of Mumbai, which builds luxury apartments for the super rich there, was, was challenged by, uh, uh, to, to come up with a project to build, to design prototype slums which worked on about 62 square feet, which is the average slum size, working on about $1,200, which is the average cost it costs to build a slum, to come up with the most ergonomic solution for them. Vivina's talking about how do we invest to make that actually a marketable proposition. So if you're an architect, there's a marketable opportunity. So there, please, take that step, cross that line, so I can be hassled by you in the days to come. Thank you.